What a wonderful time to celebrate the Lord's birth and to celebrate together as a family. So I invite each one of you to stand and worship the Lord with us. Hopefully we'll be singing some songs to make you feel like it's Christmas. may not be snowing outside as many of us are familiar with. But Jesus was born in a stable long ago. And that's why we're here, and that's why we celebrate. Amen. Here's a Christmas story. King of the days, most so mighty and so big, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created. All for the sake became show you the pictures, okay? We're going to look at the story of the crippled lamb. Okay, that's the story I'm going to read you. It's not a true story because the, the crippled lamb, the lamb in here, talks. Okay? Do lambs talk for real? No. And there's a cow in here named Abigail. The, the, the lamb is named Joshua. And they call him Josh for short. And he has a cow friend named Abigail, and they talk, but that's not real, okay? But the story is real because it's a story of the birth of Jesus. So it's kind of a fun story, what might have happened with a crippled little lamb. Tonight, we light the Christ candle. Well done. <laughs> Hope peace, joy, and love have come in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And we await his return. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Hear the word of the Lord from Isaiah 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. 
For a child has been born for us, a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to pray. Let's pray to our glorious Jesus. Jesus, thank you for breaking into our darkness. You are our hope, peace, joy, and love. We thank you that your coming changes everything. We also look forward to your return, where all things will be made right and true. Jesus, as we wait in this in-between time, break in, we pray. As we see the chaos of our world around us, make your redemption known. When we feel overwhelmed by the darkness of today, Lord Jesus, help us to see your light. And Lord, make us committed followers of seeing your kingdom come and your will done on earth as it is already in heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. Please give generously at this time of year as we remember those who have great need.
Well, tonight we celebrate Christmas Eve, one of my favorite nights of the year. We come here tonight at the height of this Advent season, a season where we focused on how Jesus' coming has changed the world. We're reminded of how even the calendar throughout the world is set apart by these days B.C. and A.D. because of Jesus' coming. We're reminded of these past Sunday mornings when we've focused on Jesus being our hope, our peace, our joy, our love. He not only came to earth, but we also know that He will return. And so our hearts are filled with desire and anticipation. We sit here tonight surrounded by the rich words of Christmas carols, the lighting of the Christ candle, and soon the lighting of our own candles during the silent night. For many of us, there are feelings of childlike wonder that come to us on a night like this. Our hearts are filled with memories of special evenings just like this one over the years. I want to share with you one word that we will focus on tonight. It's not really a word, but rather a name. The name Jesus. This season is a season that draws us back to His name. We need this reminder like Advent gives us. You see, we can become so busy being about the Master's business, taking care of the details of life, growing ministries, growing businesses, growing NGOs. We become busy about the cause of Christ, even at times making our Christianity about something other than Jesus himself. But tonight we're going to pause and focus ourselves, refocus ourselves on this name, Jesus. May we be filled with wonder and passionate delight at our King, Jesus. I'd like to read for you from Matthew chapter 1. Verses 18 to 25. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn there. Hear these words. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. 
She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The angel appeared to Joseph and told him everything about Mary and what God was doing and about this baby that was coming. And then we come to verse 21. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The angel clearly tells Joseph what he is to name the baby. Now, it was not because it was a family name. It was not because it was a popular name in the top ten names to name boys in the year 4 B.C., He was not named for a rock star or an author or a current politician. Joseph, name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now, many of us here, we have a meaning to our names. We were named because of a hope that our family had for us or because of something special happening in our world when we were born. Uh, Many of us, except maybe me, uh, my name is Gerald, Gerald Edward. You can laugh. Go ahead. It's kind of a funny name. And really, there wasn't anything happening in the world at the time of my birth with a Gerald. Now, it is my dad's middle name, but it's certainly not a family name. I wasn't named because it had great meaning. One day, someone told me the name Gerald means mighty warrior. I have no idea where they got that from. I think they made it up on the spot. And in reality, what the name Gerald means is it means rule of the spear. I'm not sure I want to be named that, to be known as the guy who rules by the spear. But it does make me think about how we named our children and how their character comes through their names. Joshua, our firstborn. We felt that God had spoken to us and said, name this son Joshua because he will be a leader, and that is what he is. Micah, our second born, we felt God speak into our hearts that he would do justice, he would love kindness, and he would walk humbly with God, and that is what he does. Hannah got her name from her dad, who named her after Hannah in the Bible, a woman of prayer. Kadis got her name because we saw her as one that God had set apart and blessed. Miharet got her name because we saw God's mercy so evident in her life. And then there is my daughter, Kaya. We felt God speak into our hearts that we should give her a name that means joy or to rejoice. Now the angel could have made it much easier and just spoken her name to me. But instead, it took a long time of pouring over languages until we came to a unique name, Kaya, which is from the Latin, to rejoice. And she has lived up to her name, spreading joy. There is something about a name that has meaning. And here we read that special name, Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus, Yahushua. In Hebrew, or Joshua, it means Yahweh saves. Think about that name for a moment. The whole incarnation is based around it. Yahweh coming in human form, fully God, fully human, to save His people back to Himself. His whole cosmic plan is fulfilled in that name. His mission to win us back to Himself. Then there is another name that the prophet Isaiah had spoken of, the name Emmanuel, which Matthew picks up on in verses 22 and 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
We take verse 21, Jesus, Yahweh saves. And verse 23, Emmanuel, God with us. And here, my friends, we have the good news. This is the good news that the angels declared. Good news of great joy. Today, a Savior has been born. The Messiah, God with us. Yahweh saves. Now, sometimes we take His name for granted. Other times we talk a lot, we spend a lot of time on theological issues without ever even mentioning the name of Jesus. But Jesus, Yahweh saves, is central to what it means to have life here and to have it for eternity. Now, it's not the five letters of His name, J-E-S-U-S, that make His name great, Rather, it is the character that's contained in His name. Jesus, Yahweh saves. Our God's rescue mission is here. Emmanuel, God with us. We are not alone. He has come for us. His name, Jesus. There's a sweetness to it because of who He is and what He has done. There was a song we used to sing in a different church in a different era. And the lyric went like this, Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed one, Jesus, your name is like honey on my lips. This image of the dripping sweetness of Jesus. But the prophet Isaiah also gave us great insight into this one who was to be named Jesus. Consider Isaiah 9. We read, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on His shoulders. And He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of His government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over His kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. You see, Jesus is a sweet name and a strong name. Yahweh saves. The government will be on His shoulders. His kingdom shall reign and the empire of the enemy will be defeated. Wonderful Counselor. He leads us in the miraculous, wonder-filled wisdom of God. He has come to advise us, counsel us, and lead us in the way of life and peace. When we hear Him speak, the Father speaks. Mighty God. The God who delivered His people from an under Pharaoh's captivity has delivered us from sin's captivity through His death and resurrection. Everlasting Father. This is our eternal, ever-caring God. He has no beginning and no end and is without limit. He will lovingly lead us into His eternal presence because of His merciful sacrifice. Prince of Peace. This prince is different than any other ruler. Earthly rulers rule through fear or for their own gain or through bureaucratic red tape. Our Prince of Peace makes His shalom known, bringing wholeness and favor into our lives. He makes His peace and wholeness known to all and everyone who will respond. A King with an eternal kingdom of justice and righteousness. It is to this King that the Magi bowed with their treasure. And it is to this King, King Jesus, that one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that He is Lord. Today He is at work making His justice and right living known. But at His return, it will all be made right and true. We look forward to the full restoration and the perfection that He will bring. This is Jesus we're talking about. Yahweh saves. God with us. Born in a manger to a virgin as God's plan to set His people free. In His name is sweetness and strength. 
Jesus, the one who has come to rescue, redeem, restore, deliver, and make us whole. The one who saves us to life today in his presence and saves us for eternity. The one who is God with us, having given up his place in heaven to live among us, to show us the way to life. And then through his death and resurrection, shows himself to be the victorious king. Jesus, that's what this night is about. There's something so amazing about his name. Jesus, you are why we celebrate. Jesus, you are why we're gathered. Jesus, you are why we leave family and friends. Jesus, you are why some among us face persecution. Jesus, you are attractive and wonderful. Jesus, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus, to you we sing. Jesus, to you we bow. It is you, Jesus, that we honor. And it is to you, Jesus, that we once again give our lives in submission. Jesus, we lay down our treasures, our preoccupations, our distractions, and our disagreements. And we again turn our attention to you, Jesus. Yahweh saves We thank you, Jesus, that you truly are Yahweh saves and God with us. And may we honor you with our lives tonight. In response, we pray. Amen. center and this room is glowing may we take that light and may we pour it out into the world of darkness around us and proclaim Christ our Savior is born amen